Yes, how you doing out there, everybody? I want to welcome you to another episode of Get In Stone with your host, Mr. Stone Potoski. Yes, yes, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for stopping on by. It means, uh, it means the world to me that even just one of, uh, one of y'all would, would drop on by and give this little show a lot of listen. So I appreciate you sending you a big old hug. Yeah. So good. So good. Mm. Yes. Oh, so here we are. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Daylight savings time. We are springing forward. Mm. Tonight. It's always kind of made me chuckle, that whole idea. Daylight savings time. Man, and his silly littleness. <laughs> Being so afraid of, uh, of things for all the reasons that we conjure up to be afraid. And thinking the solution to that fear is more control. Yeah, of course, that's, that's a dead end. But uh, if we could just uh, remember, if we could just have a reunion with the awareness that we always were, always are, and always will be one. Yeah, we are nature, we are the air, we are the water, we are the vine, the infinite source of all that is. And so the idea of any kind of control from that context, from that perspective is seen to be futile. And the fear, so long as you don't fear the fear, so long as you don't perceive the fear to be the who you are, and you know that the who you are is all that is. Yeah. Once that dawns on you, well then, I'm not saying you won't suffer because I reckon you will. But uh, you don't get stuck so much. You don't get unhinged so much. You don't blame so much. You don't take sides. Yeah, you don't point fingers. You don't judge. You're just grooving. Yeah. Right on, right on, y'all. Right on. So anyway, so yeah, so the daylight savings time is just another silly little thing that the man does because he's a fearful creature. <laughs> Anyhow, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I want you to know you are loved. Yeah, you are loved. We're going to do a little uh, reading from a book called Be Here Now by Mr. Uh, Ram Das, a cool cat. Uh, many moons ago, I was fortunate enough to go to a little 
seminar he was doing, a little event. And uh, I know he's just always been someone who, once I discovered him, he has been a, a, a phenomenal teacher. And uh, by all accounts, he was a wonderful, wonderful human being. So we're going to read from his book a little bit. Be here now. Mr. Ram Das, brothers and sisters. Yeah, here, here it is. In order to become a fully realized being, you must delight in the exquisiteness at every single level. You must take joy in your maleness or your femaleness. At the same moment that you realize you are both male and female, it's that far out. But then you go through the final door and you go from form into formless, into the void, into the beyond the beyond. When you have crossed the ocean of samskara, the ocean of illusion, the ocean of attachment, call it what you will, it's the same ocean. When you have crossed through all form, you enter the state of formlessness. It is eternally quiet. It is eternally quiet. It never was. Push far enough into the void, hold fast enough to quietness, and of the 10,000 things, none but can be worked on by you. I have beheld them wither. They go back, see all things, howsoever they flourish return to the roots from which they grew. This return to the roots is called quietness. Quietness is called submission to fate. What has submitted to fate becomes part of the always so. To know the always so is to be illumined. Not to know it means to go blindly to disaster. So says Lao Tzu in the Da Te Ching. To go, you've got to go the whole trip. All the way to the back. Before you get to the place where you see that behind all this, there is all this in its own, in its unmanifest form, always, eternally. You perceive that nothing is really happening at all. Nothing ever happens. Nothing is going to happen. There's nothing you've got to do. There's no doer to do it anyway. And then you're in the void. Then the Buddha nature sees there are many things whose veils are very thin and you can come back and teach them through your being. That's the Bodhisattva's role. Because you finally understand that. Though it is all illusion, it never was and never will be at every level at which you exist, your part of everybody else because it's all one being really 
That's the Bodhisattva's problem. So what happens is you go all the way out and then you come back to here. He who clings to the void and neglects compassion does not reach the highest stage. But he who practices only compassion does not gain release from the toils of existence. He, however, who is strong in the practice of both remains neither in samsara nor in nirvana. He neither remains in the void nor in the world. The final place that the game leads us to is where you live consciously in all of it, which is in nothing. You are eternal. You have finished perishing. There is no fear of death because there is no death. It's just a transformation and illusion. And yet seeing all that, you still chop wood and carry water. You still do your thing. You flow in harmony with the universe. You are beyond morality, and yet your actions are totally moral because that's the harmony of the universe. You see that to do anything with attachment, with desire, with anger, greed, lust, fear, is only creating more karma, which is keeping you in the game on the wheel of birth and death. Once you see through that, desires can't help but fall away. Yeah. Be here now. Brothers and sisters, that's a, that's a round das. That book is like a, a piece of art. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for spreading your joy, your love, your compassion, your kindness, your badassery. Uh, when you are here in form, yeah, Richard Albert, that was his name initially. Uh, he was one of the good buddies of Timothy Leary. When they were uh, up over there at that university in Boston and uh, taking the LSD and the mushrooms and Blowing the minds and getting into trouble. All right, so let's read uh, some poetry from uh, one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump on into it, just as we like to do. We're just gonna open it up and say, "All right, this is the title of the poem." called I Worried. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I wrong? Was I right? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing? Even the sparrows can do it. And I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? Finally, I saw what worrying had come to nothing and gave it up and took my old body and went out into the morning 
and sang. See, that right there, that's why I love this woman so much. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable to me. So good. All right, here we go. Let's jump, jump on into another Mary Oliver poem. This one's titled, I Own a House. I own a house, small but comfortable. In it is a bed, a desk, a kitchen, a closet, a telephone, and so forth. You know how it is. Things collect. Outside, the summer clouds are drifting by, all of them with vague and beautiful faces. And there are the pines that bush out spicy and ambitious although they do not even know their names. And there is the mockingbird. Over and over he rises from his thorn tree and dances. He actually dances in the air. And there are days I wish I owned nothing. Ah, all right, let's do, uh, well, let's do one more here, uh, maybe even two. This one's titled, Don't Hesitate. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind. And much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back. That sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything. But very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Mary Oliver. Oh, goodness gracious. She's just a, oh, so, so phenomenal. Thank you, Mary Oliver. Thank you so fucking much. And thank you, Ram Das. Thank you too, brother. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to thank all y'all, too. That's how it is. You know I appreciate you. Yeah. What do you say we get another hug? Ooh, yeah. Mm. Sure feels good. Mm. <coughs> Be sure to appreciate the moments, the many blessings, the tears, even the pain. There are lessons in all of it, y'all. All right, 
like, what do you see? We do a tune out the more, do a little. One of my originals here is called Step Out of Time. Constructs we create prison us to our fame. We forget to relay the deep of God's name. All the while sustain life just again. Every hour the blame, sorcery and shame. Our thoughts got the scene, bring the life I dream. So the rhythm, joy and extreme, laughter and a scream. Can you step out of time? Can you heal your heart and mind? Can you step out of time? song called uh, Step Out of Time. Yeah. Hmm. All right, much love, y'all. I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. Uh, have a beautiful day. Know you're loved. 
Know you are a shining star wherever you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. Until next time, y'all. This is Stone Fatowski saying peace.